as a real estate guy, I can make millions of dollars and use the exact same tax loopholes that a Donald Trump would use exactly. and pay effectively no tax. And does that make me a bad guy or did I just study the tax code? It makes you a bad guy, yeah. Step forward if you agree. Being poor is a choice. I do not want to be disingenuous to ignore systemic issues that we all experience, but I feel like it's 2021 and there's a lot of free resources. I mean, Facebook has a lot of free courses. I think that poor is also a mindset. I agree. Originally, when I came out here, I started straight at the homeless shelter. Mm. I had to flee from domestic violence oh for my family. My Most people in general don't choose to be poor, but since I've been here, specifically in LA, a lot of people outside, they don't want to come into the shelter because they'd rather be in the tents. I mean, I grew up poor, okay. so I have been on both sides of the coin, okay. and mm -hmm. I can reflect and look back on some of the lifestyle choices that I was yeah. making, some of the people that I was hanging around. So yeah. I don't think that people can initially control if they're born into poverty, right. but I think that there is a certain level of control that comes along with being able to yeah. have that determination and that resilience. Yeah. yeah. Can I have the disagree a step forward? We need to realize that these people are on the street not because of their own choosing, but because of the system that we live in perpetuates these things. If, if I could speak to that, I come from a family that once relied on welfare and food stamps, and I have been blessed enough to make millions of dollars in real estate. But had I bought real estate from 2005 to 2008, I'd probably be bankrupt today. I just bought at the right time. People wish to be rich, they don't want to be rich. The difference is, do you take action? That being said, I agree with a lot of your points you're making about people not really having the resources or the opportunity to have any kind of action plan. Some people don't even want to be rich. Like, I don't want to be rich. Like, but I also don't want to be poor. I'm happy in the middle. And I would want to live in society where they could perpetuate people to lift themselves out of poverty through programs and just be in the middle. Billionaires should not exist. I don't see how anyone could ever spend a billion dollars. It's not a necessity to have that much money, and I feel like there is a certain cap in which like, you can completely survive and thrive with this amount of money, and then if you surpass that, you're just hoarding. And then we've seen what people with billions of dollars are doing with their money. They're going to space for fun. Like, right. clearly, if we tax those people properly, get their wealth and distribute it to people who need it, that'd be a much better use than going to space for fun. Personally, I don't think there's an issues with billionaires existing. The issue for me is that they need to be held accountable the same way poor people do. And I'm talking about the justice system. When you look at a lot of billionaires who have gotten that way because of the just incredible amount of value they've given to society, I won't even talk about a huge crazy billionaire, I'll talk about Jay-Z, who's a billionaire. He made amazing music. That's how he became a billionaire. And so I don't think it's the government's job to interject and say, okay, you have too much, we need to give it away. I mean, it would also never happen in any other arena. No one's gonna go, hey, Simone Biles, you have too many gold medals. We're gonna take them from you and we're gonna give them to the other people who weren't as talented as you. I completely I, agree. Um, I completely disagree. I feel like that is the government's job. And Jay -Z, like you said, Jay-Z made his money from music. That's his labor. He's a musician. He's selling his talent. But then when he invested in the alcohol, then he's using other people who are harvesting the wheat, the agave. They're ba breaking their back. They're using their labor. So do you think that you shouldn't invest different. in those people? Should they just like say, the hell with your dreams, I'm not gonna invest in you? I'm, I'm, I'm saying. saying. What about the jobs? I'm, what like, do you they're, mean? They're having jobs. Yeah, but how much are they getting paid for the jobs? Are those jobs in the third world where they're getting paid pennies? Yeah, and then Jay-Z no makes job. millions off their labor. How, many how, how much do you pay your employees? You think, you think it, harvesting isn't enough? gonna exist <laughs> if Jay-Z <laughs> doesn't <laughs> invest? If I, if I may interject, I pay my employees like incredibly well, and I let them choose their own hours. Someone who works for me is a single mother. I pay her 50 bucks an hour. And I think that people that are providing jobs and opportunities 
you can hate on them all you want, but at the end of the day, like nobody would work that job if it wasn't in some way, shape, or form worth it. People who make a billion dollars get a fraction of the value they create. Everybody here who has a business understands that. Even Jay-Z only gets 15 cents a record he sells. Okay. Yes, that's so, because he got exploited by the record label who's using his label no, the, to make money. The same you thing. You keep using this word exploiting like you understand the record business of which I am in, okay? Record labels back hundreds of artists. Do you know how many go busto? Yeah. Okay? They're taking risk in an artist by the tapes, paying the engineers, marketing, et cetera. They're exploiting them, they're taking on a bet. And they can't just give everybody 50 50, they'll go bankrupt. You don't understand the record business and you're just yelling out these words exploiting so like you know what you're talking about, but well, you don't. That's why they're, they're, they're not exploiting. That's why there's one Jay-Z and <laughs> not millions exactly. of Exactly. I actually want to ask a question yeah. of how you define exploited and why you're saying that. Expl I'm using exploited in the Marxian term where your labor creates value and then your employer takes that value and distributes it unevenly to themselves and then leaves the rest for the workers. That's exploitation. My name is David. I work uh, for Disney in the entertainment character department and I make around $33,000 a year. How's your experience been working at Disneyland? My experience working at Disneyland is very mixed. The workers themselves, like my coworkers, are amazing people. Unfortunately, the company is not so great. They don't pay us that much. They have enough money to pay us more. I think they should just pay us more. But I don't think they're gonna do that. That's why I'm advocating for a union to bargain in our favor. My name is Ginny, and I run a software design agency. And this year, I'm going to be taking home about $400,000. When I started my business, that was like all consuming for me. Everything I did in my life was for business. And so I think my partner felt a lot of neglect. And so a lot of our arguments, a lot of the times that we had issues were because of my absence. The economy is rigged. If you're born in a rich family, you have more opportunities. And as someone who is poor, living paycheck to paycheck, you're stuck having to apply to jobs and settle for things that you don't like instead of being able to follow your passions. I agree and disagree. Um, I agree that it's rigged to incentivize certain areas and behaviors like we have millions and millions of farm su subsidies. So it supports agribusiness. Um, it may support one area like real estate or capital investment over labor. But I, I don't think it's generally rigged to basically keep the rich guy rich and the poor guy poor. That part I'll disagree. But there are certain policies like the reinvestment uh, in productive people's hands for building real estate. I would say that's a good thing. Right? When you say I don't productive think, people, like do you just mean people with money? No, I mean people that actually take that money, organize people, put it to work, and create value. That's what I mean by productive people. But who creates the value? It's the workers who create the value. Listen, there's people who take risk and they risk their money. That's creating value. What you discount is the person willing to risk their savings, okay, and provide capital for that venture and to be paid last. So if it goes busto, the worker still gets paid. The investor doesn't. If it goes well, the worker gets paid and the investor makes money. You discount the role of capital and savings in any type of venture. Like my mom didn't want to be rich. She wanted to be a school teacher and work and do that and live in the middle ground, and that's fine. But there are people like me who want to take a lot of risk and get a lot of reward. And we put that capital to work. And you should respect that. Hi, my name is Bill Perkins. I run a hedge fund. I do investments and other things. I manage my own money. How much I make annually, sometimes I lose money, but I'd say on average over 10 million a year. I took care of my dad in the last years of his life. Um, he died broke. I did not inherit my money. I made it myself. I really don't care about the money. Money is a tool for me to have the experiences that I want to have out of life. And there are many experiences that I want to have. You have to have a certain level of awareness and knowledge to know the rules of the game. And I think that there are barriers put in place to kind of prevent people from knowing the rules, but I think that it's out there and you can have access to it and it's, you know, I, I, I think that knowing I the agree rules with is you. different. I know the rules and I think they're disgusting. That's why I want to change them. Why don't you them. play the game then? I mean, you can change. I think they're disgusting. Why would I want to play the game? As a real estate guy, I can make millions of dollars and use the exact same tax loopholes that a Donald Trump would use exactly. and pay effectively no tax. And does that make me a bad guy or did I just study the tax code? 
It makes you a bad guy, yeah. You, you think so? If I'm, you do that, yeah. I'm following the law to a T. The yeah. law is wrong, <laughs> yeah. Why is it wrong? It's the but law. I'm not. Is it, you think the, just because it's the law, it's always right? No, certainly not. No, certainly no not. Exactly. I'm not saying but that. But that's my point. I'm no, not the law is that, written the, to encourage investment, is which the which they want. So wait, he's yeah. investing. So like the law is written to encourage certain things. If you disagree with it, you can go lobby and change. But he's not a bad guy. I know you mentioned that there are barriers in place that do keep people kind of in impoverished conditions, but I don't think that we all acknowledge like the mental. Well, uh, that's where I was going. So if so, if I can reflect on myself, I mean, I remember when I was living in poverty, um, I was just trying to survive. So I didn't even have the brain capacity to try to, or, or the willpower to kind of even desire to access the rules of the economy. But I mean, I had an epiphany and I literally woke up one day and I was like, I cannot live the rest of my life life like this and I don't care if people call me lame, square, they're going to question my blackness. I mean, I don't care. I'm getting right. out. Well, speaking about blackness, do you think there's a correlation between people from the African diaspora and people of color and poverty? You don't think there's like a relationship there? It's true that, you know, I belong to a community that makes less than certain other communities. Mm -hmm. That's true. Significantly. Significantly less. Um, but you also, you can't, you can't look at differences between groups and say it's only because of systems. Systems played a huge deal to it. I'm not discounting that at all. Like it's a real big deal and we're working to change that. But also, I mean, statistically, like people from my old neighborhood and people, you know, around this in these communities, they spend about 50% more on shoes than people who are not in those neighborhoods. And it's like, man, that. Well, not like, only that, Todd, but I think I looked up a recent statistic that said that Asian households, their children, tend to study 13 to 15 hours a week, where in a black household, it's like three hours a week. I know you said it's not like a race issue, but when you think about the way that we got here as like African people, it was a race issue. We didn't have a chance to discover America like the other people did. So I feel like, like how you would mention that Asian Americans, they study more than black households. You don't feel like those communities are kind of socialized in their upbringing to be more inclined to care about their finances as opposed to like African Americans, we would rather look rich than actually be rich. I think that's a part of like our community. It's a culture, it's a choice. Well, it's a culture. It's, not a it's choice. I, don't, I don't To a I, certain extent. I think it's, it's a choice. We're I think not, it's a, we're not, we're not. I, think it, I do think it's a choice. I'm not gonna say it's not a choice, but it's I'm saying, do you feel like some people don't have the same choices as other people's in different I communities. Think some people don't have the mental capacity to uh, to allocate the energy to learn the rules of the game, quote unquote, because their instincts are kicking in to right. just survive. I think trauma plays a heavier role than we like to account for. Trauma is the reason why I'm here. I come from a family, uh, a heavily cult Islamic family and the things that I was doing in my life they didn't agree with. They pretty much sent people to my house to kill me. I was set up multiple times. They hacked my oh social my media God. pages, both my iPhones, you know what I mean? So I don't wanna just kind of ignore trauma as if it doesn't really matter in terms of what you are capable of doing because people that are traumatized and people that do deal with a lot of oppression tend to get some of their choices removed. I can acknowledge that, yes. My name is Hanifa. Um, I'm an author and I'm currently homeless so I don't make any money right now. I grew up Muslim my entire life and in Islam it is permissible to marry your cousin so my family enforced sexual acts in between cousins. It led to me having to flee my hometown and come all the way to California which is 2,600 miles away just so that I can avoid being killed. I've worried where my next meal will come from. Me and my partner right now are applying for EBT Yo. because we are just like living check to check right now and I'm supporting both of us because she just lost her job. We are like literally trying to get help from the government so that we can know that we have the funds to get groceries. It's so hard and it's, it feels like it feels like it's not as accessible as people make it seem. <laughs> to have everything stripped away from you and to not know where you're gonna sleep. <laughs> it's just very difficult. You know, it almost feels like a past life of having like everything, you know, I had bags. I had to take my little Michael Kors back to the pawn shop, take every item of clothing that I had to Plato's closet so that I could buy a one-way ticket for myself and my child. I didn't know what we were gonna eat. I didn't know where we were gonna sleep and not to be a victim, but it's not my fault why I'm here, you know? It's because, I speak out against 
cult behavior. I speak out against pedophilia. And publishing my story has the domino effect of that has led me to not knowing where I'm gonna eat and I've never had that happen to me before prior to four months ago. And that's just really tough. Thank you for sharing your story. That's really powerful. And um, yeah, like if you need help, like after this, let's just let's just talk. That pulls on my heartstrings because I, my mother raised us three kids by herself, and my father was a wife beater. He was also a child molester. So anyone mm. listening can connect the dots on that. Mm. I feel for you. I almost want to jump out because it was only a short period of time, you know, and just that short period of time when you're busted or whatever, and you're just like whatever. But you guys were like in the real. Trenches. Thick of it. Yeah. You guys were in the trenches. I, I visited the trenches for like a couple you months. Had a <laughs> you had a toe. I had a toe, toe in the trenches, trenches. You know? So I'm, I'm getting paid paycheck to paycheck. And on top of that, I have a crippling gambling addiction. I'm addicted to weed. I'm addicted to alcohol. I'm addicted to vaping. And as soon as I have that direct deposit, it's like I have no control. Almost like I go, like I black out and I start gambling, start ordering drinks, start ordering weed. and. And then I come out of that no control feeling and I'm like thinking, how am I going to feed my pets this week, my cat, my dog? Like I had all these plans up to my payday before I know it, all my money's gone. And it's addiction. When you're in a position when you don't have a lot of money, you can't do a lot of things for fun. And you're often just like working, working, working. I have to survive. I have to feed myself. And so when you get that paycheck, and you have just a little bit of enough money to do something that will spark joy for you, it's so hard to be like, no, I'll put it aside to save. It's like, I'll just do this one thing for myself. I'll just treat myself. And then it's like, ah, it's well, now it's, now it's gone. Now, I completely understand yeah. what you're saying. And I used to think like that too, but I also thought about how joyful it would be to be rich. I would rather not have that instant gratification because the gratification of being infinitely stable or more stable is uh, more important. My name is Brittany. I am a holistic health practitioner and I make around $130,000 a year. My relationship with my brother has literally crumbled since I have acquired more money. He only calls me when he needs something. The only person that I really have a relationship is my mom. I haven't spoken to my brother. Um, I want them to be happy and, you know, and successful more than anything, but it almost feels dehumanizing to be looked at as just the help and not a sister or a cousin or something like that, yeah. My name is Mia and I'm currently working as a customer service representative for a moving and storage company. I make 45k a year. My family has always been like, oh, you gotta look presentable, you gotta look nice whenever we're going out to eat or to the mall. But as an adult, you know, a lot of my money isn't going towards buying new clothes or jewelry, makeup, whatever it might be. So you'll catch me in like sweats and a t-shirt and I just don't feel presentable enough to be at the mall, to be at a restaurant. Because of that embarrassing feeling and shame of not investing more in, in how I present myself. The disagreeer. You're just hanging out back there. <laughs> you know, I feel like I misunderstood the prompt. So have you ever worried about where thing. your next meal was gonna come from? Just ever. once. Oh. No, I definitely have. Like when I was in college, I was trying to buy groceries and uh, the lady behind me ended up paying groceries for me. And it's oh. so embarrassing because my car got maxed out and I had no money in the bank account basically. That's $15 an hour is not enough for minimum wage. I did have a question for you two. You both mentioned that you suffer from addiction and that as soon as you get a paycheck, it's gone, whether it's gambling or weed or shopping or whatever. If you had a higher income, would that change? Personally, yes, because the whole reason I gamble is like, let me get that $60,000 win and I'll stop gambling. That's my mindset, right? And another thing is I feel like if I were to have like passive income, I guess you can say, or be financially stable, I can pursue and distract myself with my actual passions. Like, I wanna start a true crime YouTube channel, but I don't have the laptop, I don't have the camera. The addiction takes control, so I don't think about the things I don't have and I just feel numb and thoughtless and I'm just enjoying my TV and 
So yeah, I feel like it would change. I would be able to have other distractions that are beneficial to me in a positive way. If you had more money, you could probably have access to help, like medical help. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, psych yeah. psychiatrist, because that's, totally. that's really expensive and you can't afford it living off of minimum wage, you know? I feel like a lot of jobs will pay minimum wage but they will expect maximum effort. Yeah. And I've, I'm like, if you're gonna pay me minimum wage, I'm putting in the bare minimum effort. I've always looked at it the opposite way. Like if I go into a company and they're paying me minimum wage, I do everything that I can to get promoted. Hi, my name is Todd. I am 29 years old. I am a real estate investor and a YouTuber and I make about $1.4 million per year. When you grow up the way I did with no money and your mom is struggling and crying herself to sleep every night because you can't pay the bills, that takes a toll on you as a kid and seeing that struggle. I got my first job when I was 12 years old, um, literally shoveling horse poop for $3 an hour. And I looked at myself when I was 12 years old and I was like, you've got to make a million dollars a year by the time you're 30. My name is Sean, I'm 23 years old. I'm a musician and content creator and I make minimum wage at a retail job. If I wasn't having to work every day to pay my rent, then I would have more time to make music and connect with people and find venues to perform my music. And if I had the money, I would be able to market and promote my music so that it could reach a wider audience. For me, my mindset is working minimum wage is always temporary. It's always been like, okay, we work minimum wage, but we're gonna work harder to get promoted and then we're gonna do something else with our lives. Many, many, many years ago, you could go live off the land. You didn't have to work for somebody in order to survive. All the land is taken, it's in federal land, you can't go fishing in these federal streams, you can't do that. So that's not possible at scale. In order to survive, you must work for someone else. That forces wages down, right? People can't just go F you, I'm not gonna work, I'm gonna chill and work on my novel or do whatever. So that's the part where I agree with you and like, I'm a supporter of UBI so that people aren't forced to work. Now where I disagree is that we don't pay people based on what they need. And you were kind of pointing to this, I give the minimum effort if you pay me minimum wage. But there's certain jobs that are not worth $15 an hour, just frankly not worth it. Maybe they're worth five, maybe they're worth two. I want you to watch TV for an hour in your house and tell me how many commercials come up because I'm doing a survey. I want to pay you $7 an hour. You think I should be, have to pay you $15 an hour for that? Or would you take $7 an hour to sit on your couch and count commercials that show up on a television? I, think it's... I mean, yeah, I would take any money. <laughs> okay, I, I, so everybody here agreed that it should be $15 an hour minimum wage. Yeah. But by making the wage $15 an hour, you just eliminated a job that he's willing to do. More money, more problems. More money, more problems, but that's a path that I'm willing to take on because the problems that come along with not having money, um, I can't imagine going back there. I made it a point to position myself um, adjacent to people who I felt like I could learn from. I remember parking my little Chevy Cruze up um, off of Griffith Observatory in Hollywood Hills just to be around money. You guys mind if I start? Yeah, okay. please. A lot of the problems in my life would be solved with just, not even if I was rich, but just like a little bit more money. I would just have so much less stress and less things to worry about and I wouldn't be finding myself in these situations where I'm worried about how am I gonna pay rent? How am I going to get gas to drive? How am I gonna eat? More money, like more social responsibility, mm -hmm. right? Going back to- What does that mean? Like, if you're a billionaire, then it's, you have social responsibility to take care of people who might have less than you. Really? Employee. I'm not seeing that. In, 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 in modern day life. You have billionaire beef. In, you got in a my, billionaire modern day beef. life, what are billionaires yeah, doing? I want to add real quick to what you were saying that I have my first felony when I was 14 years old. I had gotten a DUI in 2018, so I was still going in and out of courthouses. I'm struggling trying to get a job, applying, getting interviews getting a job offer, background check, offer rescinded, and that hurts a lot. But I'm over here watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Yolanda Hadid's daughter just so happens to also get a DUI, but she's taking off in her modeling career like it was just a hiccup. I'm also seeing cases of affluenza where this kid driving his dad's truck drunk Kill killed girl. someone and he gets off for affluenza, which it's means like you're too rich to know what's 
good or bad, so you don't get any oh, repercussions. Oh, I've never. Yeah, it so was in me, Hollywood too. I, I I agree with my punishments. I I messed up, and I will accept it. But you wanted to be fair treatment. Exactly, because yeah, when I time. see that, it's just slap in the face. Like, what is the the justice system? That's not justice. Listen, I like the song "More Money, More Problems." I like it too. It's, it's a jam. I love but the song. It's really more money, different problems. Yes, and um, that's a cut. Okay, we did it. That's a wrap. What do you, what do you code it? Oh, we don't code it. Is it Python? No, we don't code it. Uh,